Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode we're going to take a look at biogas power plant. So let's dive right into it. First you have to understand whenever you have anaerobic digestion of organic material you get this output. So basically what does anaerobic means? lack of oxygen now this can happen anywhere any place basically if you have a lot of thing that is trying to digest and let's say on top of the layer whatever pile you have on top of layer it's getting oxygen but what is down below is not getting it will uh, do what's called anaerobic reaction in that sort of scenario some gases come out same way like we breathe oxygen and give out carbon dioxide this also does the same thing however due to the lack of oxygen what they give out is methane uh, so whenever somebody says biogas be mindful it's a mixture of gas it's not that there is only one thing in it it is a mixture so mixture generally mostly 40 to 75 percent of the content is methane then it has co2 then it has some part h2s basically dangerous thing and it's carbon neutral so what does carbon neutral mean here is it's same as biomass power plant on which you can check my video is that if you burn this if you burn biogas the amount of co2 released into the atmosphere would be captured back by the uh, living matter so it's a complete continuous cycle so you don't have to worry about polluting the environment you are giving carbon dioxide to the atmosphere yes but it will be taken out of it so you don't have to worry anything about it and uh, as you can see like cow is gonna give it out anyway one way or the another so you may come to the question why there is so much interest into this first it's very easy and simple now what does that mean easy and simple think of it this way whenever you see power plants you imagine something big like this like you know big industrial but it can be as small as this like i'm talking very small like this is super easy this technology we've known for like roughly 1950s and 1970s like i'm talking in india we were using this in, in 1980s and I mean large scale rural areas were using this. So suffice to say, it's super easy, super simple, nothing fancy about it. You can use this to get your energy. And I don't mean electricity. Uh, many times you also can use this for cooking fuel, as in like uh, using LPG, instead of using LPG, you can use biogas. So in that regard, we've been using this for very, very long time. So suffice to say, in terms of green energy, we know this, we nail, we nail this up. Second, the waste that comes out of it is a biofertilizer. Now, this is the crucial difference between biomass power plant versus biogas power plant. If you have a biomass power plant, it's burning it. So basically, all you are getting at the other end is ash. When you do this, you get biofertilizer, basically one of the best type of fertilizer basically you can uh, make sure if you dump bio fertilizer properly not it's not like you know you close your eye and throw whatever you want it's like if you do it properly you can retain soils fertility forever literally this is a continuous cycle you can literally grow crops people consume the crop or animals consume the crop and then uh, they give you out cow dung or anything like that bio uh, bullshit basically and then you convert that bullshit into energy you take the energy out you put the bio fertilizer back into the soil it's a complete cycle this is the most attractive aspect of it now many of you know like uh, in recent years because we started to use fertilizer too much we started to erode soil basically damage the soil because we were putting one element too much it was uh, unbalancing the ph level it was unbalancing the basically bio bio organics into the soil was getting compromised this bypasses all of that so this is the crucial you are not only getting electricity or energy you are also getting fertilizer as a waste product so this is awesome second the scale size for this sort of plant is very awesome basically many of you must have heard like if you want to make a cold fire power plant it's not feasible to make it uh, very small as in like one megawatt or two you can make it it's just it's not going to be efficient here however it can be very small i'm talking something very small versus something very big like this will be uh, only provide let's say cooking fuel for one day for a one small family this will provide uh, either cooking gas or electricity for a small city so suffice to say scale wise this can go in very large varieties so how does it actually work where is this magic is happening basically all you have to understand is that microorganism you are not doing anything microorganism is transforming the bio waste whatever it is human feces or uh, bullshit 
it's converting that into a biogas basically you are letting these things rot in the absence of oxygen that is the crucial aspect it must be airtight it must be sealed basically there should not be any source of oxygen to it that's why you see carbon dioxide uh, coming out of it because no matter how perfectly you seal it whenever you are feeding it in there is a, some amount of oxygen there also so uh, it does convert into co2 so if you can uh, remove oxygen going in awesome and you have to make sure that uh, this whole digestion process because microorganisms generally like warm temperature you generally target uh, around 30 to 36 degrees celsius so and second uh, the this is crucial aspect so you put your thing from inlet you put it into what's called digester basically it's nothing is just a pit where you can let it rot properly and you make sure it's sealed this is crucial it must be sealed if there is a, even an air leak oxygen is gonna seep in and then it's gonna ruin your plantation so once you seal it up this decomposes gives out methane then because of uh, pressure that is being built up here is gonna push it down so pushing down it goes to the second uh, output tank where you can collect your fertilizer now be mindful you have to make sure this is properly sealed if oxygen leaks into it even by little by little it will uh, reduce your methane output so for that reason we generally either bury it down or seal it with water we have to make sure this is properly sealed however not everything is uh, dandy with this one side effect of uh, this plant is that it also creates what's called h2s now that's problematic because it can uh, cause some it's not only a toxic sort of stuff it can damage machinery now generally if you have a good biodigester plant it's not going to produce you know 10 percent of it it's only going to produce like 0.1 percent but suffice to say it must be scrubbed out this is crucial you must remove it from your uh, if you are directly using it as cooking fuel you don't have to worry about anything but if you want to use it in a generator you should remove it out so we generally clean these gases with what's called biogas scrubbers you can buy them on amazon or alibaba if you want so that is the crucial aspect you must remove h2s that comes out of it so is there a con to this well yes the biggest con of this structure is what's called scattered sources there are so many sources of biogas now you might think that's a good thing well yes and no the reason why i'm saying it's not a good thing is simply because imagine landfill yeah things that are biodegradable in a landfill are also producing methane how are you gonna collect it there uh, dairy farms like milk farms or uh, cow farms basically they have insane amount of uh, biomaterial of course many of them nowadays have their own biogas power plant but that's the second source third source is whenever you have human basically we also produce feces basically that is a source of biogas that's why many of you who have septic tanks rather than you know directly connecting to sewage uh, you must see there is a, a chimney sort of structure built to the tank to make sure the methane leaks out now of course if you light a lighter there it's not gonna catch fire because uh, it's not designed so it only produces methane it's like uh, there will be percentage of methane but not 100 percent methane so suffice to say like let's say you see a colony or you see a hostel or you see a pg where you know thousand hundred people are living or thousand people are living there is a lot of potential there but how many places you're gonna build the you know biogas power plant basically you need to build it everywhere so that is a crucial aspect this cannot be like in some scenario it does make sense to make one big centralized plant in other scenario it does make sense to have multiple small units so let's say you have a village where a lot of milk farms are there or a lot of cow factories are there so in those sort of scenario it's uh, eff efficient for you to ask all of them is hey like just give us your uh, bullshit basically and we're gonna convert it into electricity because if you build a larger plant you can increase the efficiency so this sort of situation cause a problem for implementing this on a large scale either you create a lot of small one which uses efficiency or you create uh, big ones and then figure out how you're gonna collect things so that is a kind of tricky issue with this second it needs scrubbers those scrubbers are not uh, super cheap so suffice to say we generally uh, let the biogas go through steel wool and it uh, removes the h2s so suffice to say that is a kind of tricky but not impossible it's tricky but it's not impossible now this is the part that really hurts it that is not very powerful so this is a biogas plant and as you can see all it can do is a cook a small pot of water so if you're expecting this to run your country it can't do that like uh, it can provide significant amount of power germany is has been leading the way and they can get roughly 10 to 20 megawatts of power out of it but suffice to say 10 20 megawatt for a country it's almost nothing 
so for that reason this is the limiting factor of it now it can be helped if you start collecting biogas from everywhere where it's been created because methane makes co2 like a child throwing tantrum so people say co2 is causing greenhouse gas methane is like bro i'm i'm here like when methane starts causing greenhouse effect, it causes a run effect. Basically, uh, one kg will release 10 more kg, 10 more kg will release 50 more kg. It's like it's gonna roast your planet and turn Earth into Venus. So suffice to say, methane is very, very, very dangerous. We have to make sure we burn every single bit of methane before it reaches the atmosphere. So suffice to say, we have to use it. We have to do it. And the biogas manure that comes out of it must be handled carefully. Not that it is dangerous, not that it's toxic. It's just that if you ha are put dumping it into a fertile land, you must check the soil content. You must check it. Does it need it? Do does it like, you know, your biogas, because many of you know who have been dealing with plant life, that plant life is very uh, choosy in uh, its diet. So if you put too much nitrogen, you can harm the plant. You put too much something that changes the soil pH level, you can harm the plant. So you have to be mindful. It's not just, oh, it's fertilizer and just throw it in every crop. So you have to be a bit mindful. Not difficult, but you have to be mindful. So what we can expect in the future. Now, first is whenever you have large human complex, this is the most untapped area for us. Imagine a, a community building or large scale buildings where you see hundreds of family living there. There is a lot of potential of energy there. How much you may ask? Well, think of it this way. Like, let's say there is 100 people living there. Uh, you collect the biogas for one month. So next day, you can literally run your entire complex on biogas directly. Now, that may not sound much, but ask anyone who is paying the electricity bill for a complex that has 100 living people into that. So suffice to say one day and imagine that means uh, roughly 12 days or if it's a properly well built implemented plant where you make sure the biodigester is always at 36 degrees Celsius, you are scrubbing the uh, methane that is coming out of it. If you are doing it properly, you can get upwards of like for uh, around 11 months of uh, bio gas, you can get upwards of one month of electricity. So suffice to say it's awesome. And not to mention you, are, you can sell the fertilizer, so it's double benefit. It's not only that you are taking care of your garbage, not only that you are getting electricity out of it, you are also preventing the atm uh, degradation of atmosphere. So suffice to say in all front is awesome. It must be done, like it has to be done. So if you see any uh, large scale complex building where you know you have access to its uh, owner, try to convince of them like that because there are some companies that are directly trying to implement this sort of structure because human feces does require a bit of a, a bit of different temperature and water mix so it does need a bit of engineering not complex it's just uh, somebody has to control the valve basically computers so suffice to say and you can make something very small as you can see these are people for scale it's almost the size of a human like uh, this big and it can provide enough biogas for uh, one cooking session so let's say you put dump all your uh, waste and in this scenario the waste dumped here was only uh, kitchen waste not uh, human feces so doing that only kitchen waste like so everybody is just dumping the kitchen waste here they got upwards of uh, like let's say one week's kitchen waste give you one day of cooking gas so over time you can save a lot of money and you are also taking care of your waste you are also preventing the atmosphere and not to mention this e exit pipe gives you fertilizer so suffice to say there is no point of loss in this. It's, it must be done. It is crucial for our atmosphere and we have a free source of energy. Now, localized plant make much more sense in this because the more I research this sort of situation, the more it turned out because there are so many sources for this. It's ideally useful if you start making a lot of small sources. Like if you have some scenario, let's say you have a scenario where there is a uh, village that produces a lot of agriculture waste. Yeah, then make a centralized plant because then you can actually subsidize the aspect that you have to go and collect it. So localized plant like as i already mentioned like in a, imagine a large human complex basically large colony building there are a lot of people there and even if you can save electricity for one whole day that's a lot of money that you will save and not to mention you're getting that from your garbage you're getting that from your shit so suffice to say it's free and uh, the next thing the next big thing is fuel cell now many of you know that biogas can be directly put into any engine specifically petrol engines are very easy to convert and you can just you get there are some uh, converter uh, conversions that you have to do on normal engines so it can run on biogas but they can only give you 20 percent efficiency now fuel cell on the other hand like this fuel cell uh, sears power known as 
steel cell basically you can type uh, i have provided link in the down below and this cell can give you 50 percent efficiency so suffice to say whatever energy you are getting you can get a uh, lot more energy here 20 percent more here 20 or 30 percent more and not to mention this also gives out usable heat so heat also let's say you are live in a place where it's very cold you can use the heat you live in a place where it's not that uh, you know cold you actually want a cooling solution you can run that heat through a, what's called absorption chiller and you get cooling out of that so suffice to say fuel scent can really improve uh, the performance of all biogas plants that already exist so there is a lot of room of improvement in this sort of situation and it can be done everywhere from africa to india to china to america to australia to germany so this was my presentation on biogas i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please uh, give a like and share it amongst your friend and i, I would urge you to leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of science thursday and if you disliked it uh, you can also dislike it uh, i would urge you to subscribe and press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching